Hey, this is Digital Bike Computing. Today we're gonna to talk about how do you become a systems administrator or a systems engineer. So my name is Emilio, I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And if you're watching this, you're potentially already in the IT field. Hopefully you are, um, because it's very hard for you to become a systems admin or systems engineer straight out of uni and just be given that role. Um, that term can mean different things in different organizations. So that's something that you need to be aware of. Generally, somebody who is working in a small organization, let's say you are the only IT person or you and one other person in the IT uh, team may already have the title of systems administrator. Uh, but generally, the term is talking about somebody who is in a level three position general IT sort of structure is level one, level two, level three. Level one being somebody like a help desk, service desk type of person. They're just dealing with customers on the phone, doing some basic troubleshooting, resetting passwords in Active Directory, things of that nature. Level two person is somebody who is now going out onto the floor. Somebody who out who is uh, diagnosing issues with computers, with, um, you know, screens, with projector rooms, uh, installing software, upgrading things. They're seen as the escalation point from a level one person, and they're on the trajectory to become a level three person, which is a systems admin and systems engineer. So a systems, uh, a level two person, should I say, which would be a desktop analyst, a technical support person, a IT analyst, it goes by various terms, um, may not get involved uh, as much in servers, um, service support, networking support, going into comms rooms, into data centers, and doing stuff in there. They may, but it'll be very, very minimal. Generally, those sort of tasks are um, dedicated more for the level three systems admin, systems engineer, network admin, network engineer type of uh, role. Um, so a systems admin or a systems engineer is somebody who is now uh, done level one, they're very good at level one, They've done level two, they're very good at level two, but now they're focused more on the backend infrastructure. They're dealing now more with server support, if you you know, if they have responsibility around networking, deploying network switches, routers, firewalls, um, configuring you know, security elements there, building, as I said, servers, virtual, physical servers, dealing with things like VMware, dealing with the cloud. You know, you've got technologies such as AWS, um, Amazon's AWS, Microsoft uh, Azure, Azure, um, and Google Cloud as well. Uh, so having more exposure and your hands-on in that space. Um, they may be involved with storage, um, SAN, NAS, configuring RAID, configuring LUNs, uh, file server support, uh, mail server support, exchange servers, uh, doing really things at a more upper level, maybe dealing more with server side Active Directory tasks. So really now going into the domain controller, dealing with DNS, dealing with DHCP, dealing with group policies, those sort of things. So that's generally where a level three person uh, falls into. Now, as I said, you may have, uh, a, you may be a level one help desk or a level two desktop sort of person and already have an involvement in uh, the level three space. And that's great. And that's ammunition that you can use to be able to talk to your manager or whoever it may be and say, hey, look, I'm actually not a desktop support analyst. Look at all the service side technologies that I'm working with. Give me a new job. Give me a pay rise and change my title to something that's a bit more um, consistent with what I'm actually doing. That's always good things to have. But really, in short, uh, level one, level two is something that you have done before or at least have got the skills in. Um, and I'm not saying that you have to have gone through a level one and a level two to work into a level three systems admin or engineer type of role. Um, I have worked with people who have skipped those two because they've already come in, they've got the certs, they know the stuff, they've been doing it at home, what have you, and they have already access into that level three space, but it's very, very rare. Generally, you have to work your way up into that, uh, and it can take several years for you to be competent enough, especially with troubleshooting uh, and understanding the basic desktop problems um, to be able to then move into a level three. If you're not an expert with the desktop suite of Windows, you haven't, um, you know, opening up desktop PCs and troubleshooting things, how to install software, if you haven't done that sort of stuff, 
um, it's very rare that you know I will want you to move into more of a level three type of position. So a level three, a systems admin engineer, uh, is really going to be responsible for a lot. Um, they're responsible for all the back end infrastructure that generally the end user does not see. The end user in any, in any organization has their, their desktop, has their laptop, uh, they know that it has a network cable plugged into or has Wi-Fi talking to something, um, and that's all they know. They know they've got some software on their computer that helps them do their job. But of course, a systems admin engineer is responsible for everything that is behind that. That computer connected to an ethernet port runs into a patch panel, running into a switch that's running into some sort of firewall security uh, device. If they're over Wi-Fi, it's connecting to a wireless access point, which is connected to some backend infrastructure. The end user connecting to their uh, to their H drive, to their home drive on their computer, to a network share, uh, to their emails via Outlook. Obviously, are talking to some form of server uh, that you will be responsible for. It could be a physical server, it could be a virtual server, but there's a whole range of infrastructure sitting behind that a sysadmin sysengineer will be responsible for. Uh, you're going to be responsible for things in a comms room, in a server room, uh, racking servers, cabling servers, um, running cables, patch cables between devices, perhaps going into the servers and configuring them, installing Windows Server, configuring server software, and a whole range of other back-end uh, systems network configuration technologies that uh, the end user does not see. So how do you get into that? Um, well, if you're a level two, if you're even a level one, uh, is start asking if, if you can start assisting in those areas. Uh, I find that a lot of people don't ask. A lot of people are, are happy doing their job uh, and they don't say, hey, look, um, I'd, I'd love to learn more about how the servers are configured. Um, talking to a existing systems admin or a systems engineer, whether you can have a look at their network diagrams um, so you can understand how the network is all structured. You know, it's so really understanding where all the servers sit, where the serv you know the, the switches sit, um, where the end user devices, where the firewalls are, and how it all interrelates, how the IPs talk to each other. Um, having a good exposure to that um, really shows me and shows anybody in an organization that you are ambitious, that you're wanting to learn more and more. Now generally, a level two desktop sort of person uh, will be getting gradually uh, more and more responsibility in the service space. Um, if you don't have that already, ask for it. Maybe ask if you can take care of their backups. You know, backups is a good road in. You know, every organization does backups. They do server backups. They're backing up to cloud, onto tape, onto disk, wherever it may be. Uh, but getting an exposure into that, saying, look, I wanna be able to get involved there. Um, getting involved with some basic server administration. Now, it's very rare that you'll get uh, you know, access to the domain controllers straight away, but perhaps they'll give you access to servers that are not as um, critical to the business. Uh, perhaps if, if, you, if you've got um, dev, uh, development service, test service, staging servers that aren't critical to the business, uh, perhaps you can get involved there and at least help out in that, um, getting involved with patching of the non-production systems. If you're not getting that uh, opportunity at work, right, a lot of organizations, especially in the larger organizations, it may be very hard for you to be giving given access um, to server-side technologies because uh, you don't have the skills or because there's somebody else doing that technology uh, you know, support. Uh, so it may be hard for you to get into that. So that's where you having your own um, mindset of learning outside of work comes in helpful. Um, it could be you building a lab at home. There's a lot of uh, free software that you can download at home. You can download VMware ESXi for free at home. You can build servers with you know trial versions of Windows Server um, operating systems for free. Uh, you can download a whole heap of server apps. You can download emulators for your uh, Cisco switches and firewalls. So you can at least go and play with it at home. There's a whole lot of online stuff that you can be watching. You can watch videos such as digital bike computing uh, on a range of topics that will help you to understand and have the skills needed where you can then say to somebody in an organization, hey, look, I've now got the skills. This is what I've done. This is where I'm comfortable with. I would love to get more responsibility. If you don't have a test or a sandbox environment, sandbox being that you have a little area to play with the, the tech, 
um, maybe ask if you can build one in, in your company. So you've got your production servers, uh, perhaps build some test servers that you can go in and do your own learning. To me, really having um, an ambition to learn more is, is paramount. Um, if, if you have been a, a trusted employee for X amount of time in a level two, you've done well, you're diligent, you know how to communicate, um, you're very thorough and detailed in your approach, you don't make many mistakes, you listen, you learn, you accept responsibility. They're all good signs that I'm willing to trust you more with a higher end server, uh, systems admin, infrastructure type of responsibilities. Some places may not be able to give you that next step, that next progression, so it may be time to move on. Um, you may already be a, uh, you know, you may already have skills and sort of doing systems admin engineer type of response, you know, responsibilities, but you're not recognized as that, so your title does not recognize that. Other organizations may recognize that and you may have the skills already to be a systems admin somewhere else. So don't necessarily box yourself in uh, into the one company, even though it could be a great company. Uh, some companies will not let you progress as Good as other companies so just be aware of that you may not be getting that in your company so the option there to look somewhere else is always there so that really is my summary on how to at least uh, either get the skills or progress um, in your career and to move into more of a systems admin engineer role um, I hope you found it helpful I would love it if you commented below let me know your thoughts as well as that, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, and subscribe to the little notifications there so you are aware of uh, as I release new videos, which I do on a weekly basis. Uh, but other than that, I would love it if you like this video as well. Uh, check out my other videos, and we will see you next time.